This is Jocko Podcast number 147 with Echo Charles and me, Jocko Willink. Good evening, Echo. Good evening. And it's been a little while since we've done some Q&A, so yeah. we're going to do some Q&A. Cool. Thanks to everyone for the question yes. that you have submitted to the podcast. Just a reminder, what's the best way to submit a question? The best way is Twitter or Facebook. And yeah, those are the best Your ways. Your Facebook. My Facebook or my Twitter. I don't, the Instagram messages are just out of control. There's yeah. too many of them. Yeah. And I appreciate it, but I can't get gri- a grip on them. Yeah. So Twitter and, and people, what if it's a long question? Well, th- write three Twitter statements. If it's longer than you know that many characters, it's probably, then go to Facebook. If it's like really a long, long thing, then just go to Facebook yeah. and, and send me the mess. What's that called? A Facebook message? Instant messenger, direct message. Whatever. Uh, I think DM is like a con, just okay. a general. Well, anyway, the messenger Facebook, yeah. on Facebook is, yeah. is what I get. I don't, again, I apologize. I don't get to respond to all of them. Sometimes I just try and get somebody a little like, hey, I read it. Hey, thanks. Really? Uh, you know, you know what to do. Right, a lot of times right, people right. they're just asking me because they want to get confirmed. Yeah, yeah. You know, hey, do you think I've, I'm having problems with this girl and she cheated on me? But I don't know if I should leave her or not. It's like you know what to do, bro. Yeah, you know what to do. Yeah. So speaking of thanks for everyone for the questions and uh, and that being said, I still look at just about everything that comes in. Sometimes sometimes they get a little bit lost, but. I look at everything that comes in sometimes people uh, if you're listening if you send me a question Some people ask me a question that I've I've literally been asked and we've answered on the podcast three or four times so Keep listening to the podcast because if I don't say anything most likely it's because I've answered that over I've answered it two or three times or you can deduce what to do just from listening to the podcast You'll figure out. Oh, I need to go get after it like (laughs) Yeah, when in doubt, go get a. Yeah. I think that it might be a good idea to have like a what do you, what do you call frequently asked? Yeah, questions. I know. I know. Um, we do need to do that. Yeah. So let's do it. Check. First question. We said that for like two years. By yeah. The way. Yeah, I did. Right when I said that, I was like, sure, I think yeah. I said that before. No. D- didn't Debbie put together like a whole thing on that? Maybe. Yeah, she did. Mm. So we could probably dig that up and actually put it to use, yeah. which would be smart. Yes, sir. I believe. <laughs> I believe the same thing. First awesome. question: Do you have any thoughts on what dis- disciplines someone can use to improve their decision-making skills as a leader, not only in keeping clarity of thought during high-pressured situations and environments, but also in making the correct decisions when it is vital? Okay, so we talked about this last week. You have to learn to detach. And how do you learn to detach? You learn to detach by putting yourself in stressful situations and then observing how you react. So, good stre- stressful situations to put yourself in. Well, what makes you stressed? One thing that will make everyone stressed, especially when they first start, is start with jujitsu. That's gonna that's gonna put you in stressful environments. Look at sports. What are you gonna do? You know, put yourself in stressful positions in sports. What else makes you stress? Public speaking. Mm-hmm. Right public speaking makes some people really stressed out start doing it more. What about competition shooting where you've got to Or hunting where you've got to do something in a stressful environment or Archery, you know, I started started archery recently. You did. And, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and so that's one of those things where you got to learn to detach You got to learn to pay attention to things that are going on mm-hmm. if you're all caught up in the moment Then you're gonna miss it. So that's number one. If you want to learn to deal with stress, put yourself in stressful situations that are under some kind of control. You know, even something like uh, paintball. You know, we do gigs at Echelon Front where we put people through what we call FTXs, where you go out and you're going to fire. We usually use airsoft because it's a little bit more, it's a little easier to work with. Mm. Uh, but actually, what we started using now is we've got these high end laser tag guns. And so that's that's what we use, and they are super effective. They're 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 awesome. They're awesome training tools. Like if we would have had them, in, if we would have if they would have existed when I was in the SEAL teams, I would have used them then because they're that good. So 
we use those and we put people in stressful situations. Go hit this target. There's bad guys. There's you know people are going to get shot. There's people yelling. Put yourself in stress, stressful situations and learn to detach. Put yourself in stressful situations with the purpose of learning to detach and stepping back mentally to figure out what's going on. Okay, that's first part. Next part is how do we make good decisions? Well, number one, making correct decisions. You got to study. You got to know and understand. You got to know the background. You've got to know the historical outcomes of equivalent type decisions that have happened in the past, similar situations. Mm -hmm. And if you know the history and you know the background, then you can use those to assess the current situation you're in. And then once you assess the decisions that you can make, assess the possible actions that you can take and then assess the outcomes that those decisions will have. Those actions will have. And when you're doing that, you also have to assess the possibilities of inaction. Mm. So a lot of times people forget that one. They don't, know, they don't know if they should do A or B. What they forget is there's also, what if I don't do either? Mm. What's going to happen? Sometimes not doing either is good. Most or a lot of times not doing either is bad. So you got A or B. What should you do? Maybe sometimes you got to pick A or B. Sometimes, occasionally, it's better not to do anything, and you wait and let the situation develop a little bit more. What? So the point of this is whatever you can know beforehand, you know. You learn, you study, you understand, you know the standard operating procedures, you know what variance, variations have been made on the standard operating procedures, and that's how you go forward and you execute. Now, the thing that you have to remember is that you can't know everything beforehand. Which is why it goes back to study and practice detaching and making decisions. So so now let me dig into detaching a little bit. Let's actually break that down. Maybe some mechanical steps that you can use. Number one, step back. Right? L- literally, physically, take a step back from the situation that you're in and move your head and look around. So when we used to shoot, they would teach us to scan. Like you would have to physically move your head. Mm. And what that is, is a mental reminder that you need to look around and assess what's happening. So once you've taken a step off the line, whether that's taking a step back from the table when you're in a meeting, if you're, in a, if you're a firefighter and there's a fire happening, take a step back so you can see the bigger picture. If you're in a cop and, and there's a shootout happening, where can you go to step back, get some cover and look around and see what's actually happening? If you're in a, if you're in a conversation with someone, stop talking. If there's an argument going on, stop talking, take a step back and actually listen to all the other elements that are shouting and yelling at each other. If there's a decision that needs to, needs to be made in a, in a planning situation, step back from the plan. Don't just take a step back from it. Look at it more broadly. So that's step number one is to step back. Mm. Number two, then you're going to come up with, hey, what are the possible decisions that I can make? I could go this way. I could go A, B, D, A, B, C, D. I could do any one of these things. Keep an open mind. This is the problem some people have is they, they come up with two decisions, three decisions, and they don't think about anything else. Mm. So you kind of have to like repeatedly detach. You kind of have to stay detached. That's why it's good you throw out an idea like if we're planning for something and I come up with three ideas, I say, Echo, what do you think of these? I give them to you, then I step back again. Mm. I keep my mind open. So that's why the more you can get your subordinates to plan, the better off you're going to be. The more you can get the people below you in the chain of command to come up with an idea or come up with the ideas, the better off you're going to be because you're not embroiled in it. Mm-hmm. You're you're de facto detached because you're letting them run with it. Then, okay, once you look at your decisions, then you got to look at what the possible outcomes are. What are the possible things that can happen? Is this could how bad could this go? Risk versus reward. You got to weigh those things out and you got to do it fairly quickly. And again, you got to you got to figure out what's the result or possible outcome for inaction and then you just weigh out these various options that you've created and you figure which one which outcome has the most which one makes the most sense that's that's what's good and like i said inaction is some people like any action is better than no action not always true mm-hmm. not always true sometimes you can learn more by letting things develop and letting things reveal what what the status is so that does make sense, and sometimes you do hold off. If if you if you can see that a problem is getting worse, though, well, then we got to do something. Mm-hmm. Then generally, okay, let's make some kind of a decision very quickly. Now, one of the most important things to remember, and there's a little dichotomy to this, 
is that you don't always have to make giant decisions. You don't always have to make the all the 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 all powerful decision of might. Mm, yeah. You know, it's like, do we go or do we not go? Yeah. You don't always have to say we go. Right. Sometimes you can go. Well, let's push a little further. Yeah. <laughs> let's let's mo- let's move a little bit further before we make that decision. Or hey, let's stay where we are and see if it develops. Or let's back up a little bit and keep watching. Yeah. So instead of we go or we don't go, there's actually a, a bunch of different decisions that you can make besides we can go or don't go. Mm. There's a building, there's a bad guy in it, let's go or let's not go. No, actually, let's put eyes on the target for a little while. Let's let's call and see if there's any other intelligence. Let's put an aircraft overhead. There's all kinds of decisions that you can make. Mm-hmm. Let's push a little bit closer. Let's stage. Let's monitor. So there's all kinds of decisions that you can make that allow the the situation to develop further and maybe reveal the proper decision to you in the long run. So my, my fear of saying that is that people be get paralyzed. What is it? Analyze the uh, parallel yeah, paral- 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 yeah, analysis paralysis. <laughs> That's my fear about saying that because the dichotomy is you can sit around and analyze and figure out and look at something for over for forever while the situation changes and now you lose. Yeah. So, Yes, you don't have to make giant decisions, but at the same time, you got to be decisive. Mm-hmm. There's a dichotomy. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry leadership is not easy. Wrote a whole book about it. <laughs> dichotomy of leadership. Why? Because that's what happens. So there you go. That's my assessment of how you can improve your decision-making skills. Mm-hmm. Experience goes a long way. Yes. Yeah, it's one, one of those deals kind of when you were talking about the the results versus the 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 method mm-hmm. right decision making some sometimes like the result actually both method and results kind of the value isn't even in the results it's like you haven't getting that experience going through it you know it'll improve your decision making true true yeah anytime you can be in a situation where you're making decisions and getting experience at it you're going to get better at it yeah kind yeah. of the value in role playing that is a value. That's why we do a lot of role playing in Echelon. Kind of like a little thing. And people might think like, oh, that, how does that work? Come and get it. Come and get it. <laughs> you, you I watch people that. all the time it totally improve as leaders because put them through a role play scenario as a leader yeah. where they're going up against a combative subordinate yeah. or a subordinate that's lazy or a subordinate that's angry or a subordinate that that wants to leave. Like you put it, you put a person role playing in those situations over and over again and they get so much better. Three iterations. Yeah. Three iterations, yeah. and people are exponentially better at handling situations. Yeah, because it's like some. Of, I mean, most of the time, anyway, it's just a matter of them like never seen it before, and yeah, then you sure. know when it's in the during game time, it's kind of like you got to make the decision super fast, so totally. you can't an- analyze. But in the role playing situation, you can analyze, you can do whatever, yeah. and then t- and then learn it. No, when that's it's a great done. point. I I actually should have brought that up. That's a great point. Is another way that you can get better at making decisions by role playing. For yeah. sure, put, give yourself the options. Put get, put your set, set yourself up a pressure situation mm-hmm. and have people role play it out with you of what you're going to do. Yeah, so it's kind of like like mock experience. That, that's really. basically well, it is it is mock experience. That's yeah. basically what SEAL training. Well, not the basic SEAL training, but the SEAL training that I ran. That's basically what it was. Mm-hmm. We're going to have people act like bad guys, mm-hmm. and you're going to make play. decisions all day long. That's a role play. Yeah, get some. Yeah. Check. Like remember, and again, going back to like just seeing it once, right? Just seeing it one time is is uh, way bigger difference than y- than I mean, compared with never seeing it all versus seeing it once. The difference between that is way bigger than seeing it like twice versus once. Yeah. You know, if you've seen it once, it's kind of like okay, now, yeah, this it, yeah, it's like night and day. It's so, night and day. The difference between knowledge and like no knowledge, no knowledge yeah. is crazy. Yeah, and we see that over and over and over again. Like on Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, you ever seen that one? I'm pretty sure. Wait, wait how old is that one? Uh, like I saw the, the all, like that series when it came Sean out. Connery. When I was a kid. I think I seen it. So at the end, they go through. The, I had to have seen the, the it, things, so. right? The, they're like these booby traps, right? Mm-hmm. They get the Holy Grail. That's what mm-hmm. they're doing. Oh, then I've seen this one because everyone, the guy's face melts, right? No, that's Raiders of the Lost Ark. Oh, okay. When they open the Ark, oh yeah, you yeah. shut your eyes, yeah. It's old school. Anyway, no, <laughs> this one they have to go through these, like ch- these tests or whatever. Uh-huh. They're they're booby traps to get to the holy grail, and one of them was you have to kneel 
only the penitent man will pass. That's what it says in the mm-hmm. Grail Diary, mm-hmm. which is Indiana Jones' dad's diary that he took all the notes in. And so he's like, oh, you got to interpret that, right? So they had all these uh, people. There were bad guys there, too. Mm-hmm. So they just send someone in there. And then the guy'd go in and his uh, head gets chopped off. Mm-hmm. So you go in there, you know, hey, that blade is going to come chop off my head because I seen that one guy get his head chopped off. I'm just going to duck. Mm-hmm. It's one time that's all you got to know. Yeah. The blade's going to come out. I'll duck. Good, good point. Thanks, Indy. Grand, granted, there was more booby traps. and You, you kind of got to refer to the Grail Diary for the answers. Subject to interpretation, by the way, but same deal. You see the point, though, right? If you walk through a hallway, I get it. Yes, and you see no, the guy get his head chopped off. Yeah, you know. You, okay, I better duck now. Yeah, you best duck. Yeah. Yep, I get it. Thank you. One time, one time. That's all it takes. Anyway, next question: How do you practice normal face? So same, and the reason I group these two questions together is because there's a little, there's some similarities there. You know, how do you mm-hmm. practice normal face? Which is a legitimate skill, by the way. Yes, sir. It is. It's it's oh, it's a funny little game. If you haven't heard it, what you do is I used to do this with my kids. I'd put line them up, and if they made any expression whatsoever besides just a normal plain face, I'd hit them in the head with a uh, the inside cardboard roll up of a wrapping paper. So that's there's the game, and it's a lot of fun, and we'd have fun doing it. Everyone would laugh. Mm-hmm. Well, it, it's also useful as an adult to, to be able to not show your emotions. So. How do you do it? Same thing. Put yourself in stressful situations. And, you know, a good one is jujitsu. Jujitsu, if you can just like act normal, even when someone's just crushing you, then that's a positive thing. Yes. Like, you know, sometimes you and I are rolling. Yes. And you'll be like, oh, I felt a sense of urgency. Yes. That's, that's when I lose normal that's failure. face. Yeah, yeah. It's failure to keep normal face. Yes. So I get a little bit scramble because you're going to pass or something like that. <laughs> yep. And then you, then you feel all good because you yes. made me react. You right. broke my normal face. Very good. So, yes, that's good. I would say well, the thing about normal face is practice it all the time. You know where you practice it? You practice it like when you're driving. I mean, I can't do this anymore. Cause, uh-huh. But I, I, when we started this podcast, I would get questions all the time about road rage. Yes. How do you prevent road rage? How do you prevent road rage? I think everyone's so in the game now that they're, they figured it out. Yeah. But that's a good, you know, anytime where there's something bad happening, mm-hmm. like something annoying, Mm-hmm. Something like the line. Yes, the line. The line at the DMV, <laughs> the line wherever. Sure. And you just, just, just keep normal face and just act like whatever, detach and yep. just act normal. Easy money. In jujitsu, when you're in between rounds, mm-hmm. don't act tired. Yeah. That's like one of my, I try and maintain that rule all the time. You taught me that. Oh. You, I don't even know if you meant to teach me that. And I told the story before, but uh, uh, I'd roll with like you. looks like we're going to hear it again. <laughs> I, 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 we'd roll and I'd be tired or whatever after rolling with you. And then, you know, and people do this all the time and it sticks. It's like a red flag to me. Not a red flag warning. of It just sticks out a lot when people do this. After the round, they'll just flop on their back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And be like, oh, you know, like breathing all hard. Kind of just, you know, indicating that, oh, that was a tiring round, mm-hmm. right? You think, yeah, you're gonna have tiring rounds. I, I get it, kind of thing. This, this is the message that you conveyed to me through your actions. You didn't tell me this, yeah. but through yeah. So I roll with you and I do that, or something along those lines, right? Oh, and you like stand up, not breathing through your mouth. I, I remember that you're just like, you know, like mouth closed, and then you were looking at me, almost like you're disappointed in me. I and, was. <laughs> yeah, I know you were. <laughs> not thinking back. Yes, I realized you probably were. And you said. You look a little tired, and then you just walked away. Mm-hmm. Like, man, almost yeah. like that was the bad part. The, the the part that I looked tired, that that was like the bad part you didn't like. And I was like, from literally from then on, I'd act like I wasn't tired in between. Even if I was tired, I would try to act like I'm not tired actively. That's so important. Yeah. It's important in life. Yeah. You know, it's important as a leader. It's mo- way more important as a leader than anything else. When you l- start to break, think, well, I, I don't know if you have any examples, of, but like I think of times in my life where I would see my leader start to break yeah. and just think like, how horrible that is for the rest of the team. And I'd be looking at a leader that was breaking and I'd be like, man, you are letting everyone down. And I, you're not going to do it to me. Yeah. I'm going to, you know what? Actually, this is an opportunity for me. If you're looking weak, I'm not gonna get all aggressive, but I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure that people aren't gonna follow that attitude because that attitude's yeah. gonna hurt us all. Yeah. So as a leader, normal face is even more important. Yeah. I'm not saying you never show emotions. This is a dichotomy. I'm not yeah. saying you never show emotions as a leader because you absolutely do show emotions as a leader, but you make sure that they're controlled. You make sure they're not emotion negative emotions. Yeah. 
so am I saying to not be yourself? Mm. Yes, I am. Because <laughs> if yourself is being a weak, a weak loser, and yeah. you're in charge of a team, and you show everyone that, mm. you're wrong. No, you need to stifle those emotions, which we've talked about before. You need to stifle those. You need to act. You need to act like, hey, we're going to make this happen. Yeah. This doesn't mean lie to them. This isn't like, hey, the boat's sinking, but don't worry. We're, it's going to be okay. No. Yeah. Hey, guess what? Boat's sinking. You know what we're going to do? We're going to break out our life jackets. We're going to form into a pool. We're going to grab whatever we can off this vessel. We're going to make sure we get some. You know what I mean? Yeah. As opposed to, the boat's uh, sinking. Right. Yeah. It's true. So you lead. Check. So if. Um, what like when your kid falls down, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally, totally. Like, yeah. y- you notice? Oh my gosh, are I, you okay? Yeah, no, running negative. over there. Yeah, yeah. Wait, oh, how's it? I was at the park. My son mm-hmm. too climbs up high on this thing. It's mm-hmm. like a slanted uh, jungle gym kind of yeah. thing. It's just slanted. It's like pretty high, where it's not like so high that he shouldn't be up there. It's mm-hmm. not that, but it's it's high where you got to keep an eye on that yeah. thing right there and. Yeah. Sure enough, he takes a step or whatever, and he just straight up falls to mm-hmm. the ground. And the ground is, ah, oh, the ground was like a bunch of this weird hay kind of stuff. Okay. So it's, it wasn't like concrete, put it that way, but okay. he fell down full on. Mm-hmm. And the kind, you know, the kind of other parents are looking, and my mm-hmm. w- wife is sitting right next mm-hmm. to me, kind of far away, maybe. You like had to grab 15, her, didn't you? I gra- literally yeah, grabbed yeah, her, like, dude, don't, don't run don't over there. You move. And, um, my daughter was there. She's super caring, too. So I'm like, ah, I should have grabbed her, too, but she was far away. Anyway, so he falls down. Of course, doesn't cry. He's more, no. like, surprised and yeah, stunned yeah. and looking around, almost with a look on his face, like, how should I react yeah, right totally. now? Yeah, it totally is. That's exactly what he's doing. Yeah. And, and then- you tell him. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah. I mean, I'm Tell like, him how to react. Yeah. So I, I didn't- I'm sure- you, I mean, when I'm, my kids would take a digger, I'd start laughing. You know, uh, like, oh, 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 that was awesome. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, makes sense. And then they're like, really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that was awesome. Oh, you got a little skinner? Nice. Yeah. Oh, look, you're bleeding. <laughs> yeah. That's going to leave a cool scar. Yeah. You're awesome. Welcome to the club. Yeah, that's a good one. Like, so, like, that's awesome kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. I'll be like, oh, I stand up strong. Hurry up. Hurry up. Like, kind of like you got to beat it and tell, like, show me how strong you are kind yeah. of thing. Oh, I did that the other day. Um, nonetheless, yeah. So he got up and he didn't cry. Mm hmm. Of course he that did. That was a high ass fall too. Intri- he landed feet? correctly. How many feet? Uh, like it was taller than I stand. So. So we're talking seven feet. Like seven. Six un- six, six. Yeah. Okay. Over that's, over. That's a good digger. Yeah, it was it was solid. Yeah. But he landed good. good. Like if he would have landed on his head, that's an injury straight up. But yeah, he, for sure. He felt like good, which is lucky. But yeah, nonetheless. So yeah, the point is, if I were to, oh my gosh, oh, I like ran over there or something like this, oh, yeah. it would have jammed him up. Oh, yeah, isn't that why the airline pilots, when you get turbulence, they're like, "Hey, everybody, just go ahead and buckle your seat yep. belts for." We mm-hmm. might feel a little bit more that you know, instead yeah, yeah. of, "Hey yeah. guys, I know. buckle your seat belts now. <laughs> <laughs> We're going." Yeah, I, I very much appreciate that when they do that. By Check. the way, all right. So, next question. Next question. <clears throat> I tell the team we need this done by three p.m. They say, "Got it. We'll have it done by three p.m." But they don't deliver on time and tell me, well, we didn't know we needed it done by 3 p.m. How do I take ownership of this? Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is this seems like a tough question, right? But it's actually not that tough of a question. Because what you think is like, well, they, they said they were going to get it done, then they didn't get it done. Then how can that be my fault? Right. And I, well, maybe that's not how the question is meant, but that's the way I'm interpreting it for the purpose of this answer. True. <laughs> Because maybe he just meant like, hey, how do I take ownership of this? And if that's the way he meant it, fine. The answer is the same, actually. So what happens is, if you if that happens with, what happens is, if that happens with your team, then you take ownership of it by recognizing that you did not communicate effectively. Because if your team isn't doing what it is you need them to do, that is actually your fault as the team leader. Mm-hmm. They either didn't understand how important it was, or they didn't understand how solid that deadline was. Or they didn't understand that when you said this thing needs to be completed by three o'clock, that you meant completed by three o'clock. Maybe it's because you usually say, hey, we need this done tomorrow at two, and you give them slack, and they just mm-hmm. kind of take advantage of it, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Then, uh, you know, if you want to take ownership of it, maybe you didn't follow up enough, right? Maybe you trusted them too much. Whose fault is it if you trusted them so much that you just let them, you showed up at 2.59, is it done? Mm. Well, no, we didn't think it was due, like, we didn't know you needed it actually. Yeah, like three, so three. whose fault is that? It's your fault. You trusted them too much. Maybe you gave them too much leeway. 
right? Maybe you gave them too much leeway, too much decentralized command, dichotomy leadership. Maybe you went too far with decentralized command. You said, hey, get this done by three o'clock, figure out however you want to do it. I'll be back at 259. Yeah. And you roll out and it's not done. So what do you do? You come back at three o'clock, it's not done. It is your fault. You take ownership of it. You say to your team, look, hey, okay, so now how, how do you take ownership of it? Cool, you fix the problem. How do you fix the problem in this case? Well, guess what? Next time I tell you something's done at three o'clock, I'm gonna check in with you. I'm gonna check in with you a few times. Mm. Uh, here's the progress that we wanna make. I want you to be here by this point. I want you to be here by this point. I want you to be here by this point. And that puts us on track to finish well ahead of three o'clock. Yeah. So let's make it happen. Are you gonna micromanage a little bit more? Yes, you are. They missed a deadline. You're not allowed to miss deadlines. Yeah. Not allowed to miss deadlines. Do I micromanage you, Echo Charles? No. Have you ever missed a deadline? No. Well, there's been some podcasts that didn't come out on time. Oh yeah, right. Well, I, yeah, I guess it depends on what you mean. I, yeah, I guess. But I, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's been some podcasts that didn't come out on time. Yes. And I would send you a text like, "Hey, just wondering if you knew about a podcast that was, you know, supposed to come out five that, hours ago." That happened one time. Well, no, two times. I think it's happened two times. Yeah. Yeah. One of them. Yeah. So we you don't warrant micromanagement because yeah. you we've done 147 podcasts. And you've had two that weren't out on time. Mm. Do I need to micromanage you? No, I don't. Don't need to, because we're all good. The podcast, come, hey, occasionally the times that they didn't come out, one of them was like straight up operator error, where you were like, I didn't press the button publish or something really lame like that. Yeah. The other time was like major technical difficulty. We got a problem. It's yeah. going to be a couple days. Yeah, then there was another time. What was the other time? When we went to Maine the first last year. And what happened? We just got there. The, on the night that I was supposed to publish it, my mind was just you know, distracted <laughs> by the new. I had lost my camera. It was a crazy time for uh, everybody. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the next morning, you so, um, you know, graciously posted a picture of me sleeping on the plane, by the way, <laughs> and said, maybe someone can tell Echo to publish a podcast publicly, which is a complete violation, by the way. Yeah. Take a picture of me sleeping. We, but, hey, nonetheless. We weren't having fun. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was actually completely warranted because it really captured like what it felt like. I just totally spaced it out. <laughs> so my point is, you get stuff done on time, yeah. you have a good track record, there's no need for micromanagement. Yes. If, you were, if you were hitting a lower number, you know, if, if every, you know, once every, once a month it wasn't on time, <laughs> yeah. you'd be hearing about it all the time from me. I'd be like, hey, we good tomorrow? We good? Yeah. I'd be checking in with you. Until you got so mad at me following up with you, you would just be like, hey, I got this, and you would never miss it again because you didn't want to be bothered. Right. So for this one, again, it's important to remember that with the idea of extreme ownership, it's not just like, oh, well, I'll say this is my fault. No, when you're in charge of a team and something goes wrong, it actually is your fault. It actually is your fault. And that's all there is to it. Maybe there's some people you need to fire. Because they are the they're at fault for this mistake happening, and you've let it go out too long, and you didn't get rid of them. That's your fault. Yeah. But it actually is your fault. How do you take on, How do you take ownership of it? You fix the problem. Maybe yeah. you got to in this particular case. Maybe you got to step up the micromanagement. That's yeah. that's the way it works. Yeah, it makes sense. Also, to the well, and I'm speaking from a perspective of someone who could very well easily space out this project by 3 p.m. By the way, that's that's potentially me but this is this is when it can happen um where let's say i get a list of like two things three things whatever i gotta do right like mm -hmm. hey we you know we want this or whatever and then let's say it's not necessarily by 3 p.m let's say it's like by next week friday so i got a week and a half to do these three things and then the next day there's like another list of two things mm -hmm. and the next day after that one thing says hey you know what this is the priority three days later after the list been established hey this is the priority get this done first then you got one more thing right so this thing that i said yeah got it i'll have it done by friday kind of thing sort of gets shuffled and forgot you know like okay. forgotten yeah, so maybe okay. i didn't organize it or what's whatever. your point in saying this are when, you just putting yourself on report yeah are you saying that you need to make a list are no. you just saying you need to write things down yes. people that miss things you know what you do you write them down yeah i used to make little boxes yeah. I'll show you some of the checklists. You come to my house, I'll show you checklists I used to make. Yeah. They, are, they were psycho OCD little checklists, little boxes next yeah. to, like I would be going on a trip, I would make a little box. Socks, t-shirts. Oh, uh, dang, okay, you know, that, that deep. Yeah, book. everything, every single thing I was taking, I would have on a list. I still got those lists. I got deployments from the, the 90s. 
of what I took on deployment. Dude. That's pretty legit right there. Little yeah. boxes, little boxes. In the 90s, they were written down on paper. Dude. Then in the 2000s, I got the computer. <laughs> cool. <laughs> and I'd print those things out. No app. So hey, if people have problems, if you personally are telling me that you have a problem, you got to write something down. Yeah, so, Boom. yeah, and obviously, you know, me and you are different. I don't have those kind of notes, but <laughs> what I'm saying is, th- uh, yeah, like, that could be your methodology of your micro, quote-unquote, micromanagement style yeah. for things like this. Just make sure they got it kind of thing. Like, if yeah, for the sure. things I'm thinking in about. In fact, there could, you, can, you can give lists. I normally wouldn't have to do this, mm-hmm. but sometimes there's been a couple times in my life and career where I'd have to give people a list. Like, hey, yeah, I make yeah, the yeah. boxes for them. Like, hey, here's what you got to yeah. get done today. Day. Yeah. Make sure we understand each other. I would only do that if they dropped the ball a couple times. Yeah. Like, oh, they didn't get this done. They didn't get that done. Okay, guess what? I need to write it down to make sure it happens. Yeah. So yeah, and again, it's not like, and, and like, I'm not saying it's not my fault because you give me too much. I'm not saying that. I'm saying like, not everyone. Me. I'm talking about me. Not everyone's as organized as maybe you. You know, so they're gonna need some micromanagement in this particular way. You know, maybe because maybe that's it. I mean, I, I think the tone here, the question, could be me. Could, totally could be me, mystery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it kind of seems like, hey, they said they got it and they didn't get it. What more do you want from me? No, kind of thing. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's thing? a good. That's a good way of putting it. And I just gave the list of what more you can do. Yeah, exactly. You can spell it out for them you can yeah. micromanage you can check and do check-ins with them do all those things yeah, yeah man. There it is. next question next question you must have strong feelings about current events and politics generally given your experience yet you remain silent on this issue why to appeal to a larger audience or the soldiers mentality of not criticizing the commander-in-chief is that why do I have strong feelings on current events and politics? Uh, sure, I do, but they're more broad. So I have very strong, broad feelings on current events and politics. I am a patriotic person. I believe very strongly in individual freedoms of human beings. I believe in having a very strong military. I believe in having a small government. So I have strong feelings about those things. However, I don't have strong feelings about the nonsense and micro dramas that are on the 24 hour news cycle (laughs) that are just constant, and social media, just constant things. And we talked about this last podcast, things that don't matter. So much of the current events don't really matter in the big picture to me or even to the country. (laughs) And, you know, I was uh, on Ben Shapiro's show. And, you know, he was, I basically said, look, look, like overall Americans have sort of the same goals. And he said, I don't know if I believe that. And I said, well, I work with all kinds of companies, with people all over the country, and the people that a guy like Ben Shapiro hears from, he's just he's just bombarded by the extremes on both sides 24 hours a day. Mm. I don't want to be in that position of getting bombarded by these extremes 24 hours a day. I said, Ben, you're right. There are some people in the country that believe the far left or the far right. I said, most people are concerned about their life and doing a good job and you know building their business or you know b- paying down their mortgage that's what they're concerned about yeah. and so they're not like freaking out about the little every little micro drama that gets unleashed into the press and social media every single day and so so why do I not join into that because I don't want to join into that and also, I don't want to make a podcast. I don't want to spend all my time making a podcast that's that's out of date the day it comes out. Like I don't want, I don't want to invest my time in that. Mm-hmm. I don't want to. And guess what? There's there's literally giant multi billion dollar news media outlets. And guess what they do? That's what they do all day. Mm-hmm. That's what they do all day. They make up story about this thing and that thing and this thing. I can't react fast enough. It's just dumb. So. If we were to be talking about current events, then the, by the time the podcast comes out, the current event has been over. Some people are listening to this podcast, and it's 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 2022 right now. Right now, 
Some someone is listening to this podcast right now, and it's 2022. Hmm. No, there's there's no topic of current events that we could talk about, or barely any, that actually impact what's happening four years from now. People, I meet people every day now. I meet people that are that say, "Hey, oh man, I've been listening to podcasts. I'm on 28." Yeah. Um, that's that's two years ago, yeah. right? That's two years ago. What was the what was the current events two years ago? They were it's totally different than they are now. Yeah. So, so there's that. So that's why little current events thing. As far as appealing to a larger audience, that part of the question. Well, if my goal was to appeal to a large larger audience, then I think I actually would talk about the trendy stories of the day and put out little little clips of sound bites of all this stuff. And instead of Instead of doing what I do now, which is to read a hundred year old out of print books, <laughs> like that's a great way to build an audience. Or let's talk about the Rwandan genocide, or let's talk about the Holocaust, or let's talk about the rape of Nan King, or let's talk about the My Lai Massacre. That ought to build a great audience. So, so the idea that, oh, I'm trying to build a larger audience, it's like, no, actually, people that want to listen to this want to listen to it. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to build an audience by manipulating what what I'm thinking about. No, I'm actually I'm I'm talking about and I'm diving into what I find important and what I think I can learn from. And I get more out of this podcast than anybody. I mean, I know a lot of people say, "Oh, I've gotten a lot from your podcast." I get more out of it than anybody cuz I get to dive deep into this stuff and really look at it. So, no. It's not the trying to appeal to a larger audience. In fact, if I want a larger, larger audience, I'd do exactly what you're talking about. As far as the soldier's mentality of not criticizing the commander-in-chief, well, I actually don't agree. I don't agree that that's a soldier's mentality, and I don't believe that it should be a soldier's mentality. The soldier should question their leadership. And Now, should they do it tactfully? Absolutely. Because I don't want to be surrounded by yes-men. That's, that's wrong. Also, if you... <laughs> What am I trying? Uh, this is just a general leadership principle. What have I said a thousand times on this podcast? I'm trying to build a relationship with the person above me in the chain of command. So when I was a, in the military, if I wanted to have influence over my boss, over my commander in chief, would I outwardly criticize them and make make them think, "Oh, this guy just doesn't like me. I'm going to take my first chance to get rid of him or not promote him." No, I'm actually going to play the game, and. I'm gonna look and say, okay, boss, hey, I see what you're doing here, I wanna support what you're doing, but does this make sense, could we do it a different way? So I'm trying to build a relationship with my boss up the chain of command. I'm not trying to ostracize him by by making him look bad or by openly criticizing my boss in in uh, you know in the open. Because yeah. what have I done? Is my boss gonna listen to me? No, actually my boss isn't gonna listen to me at all. So I don't wanna be surrounded by yes men. But at the same time, if someone's making a bad decision, if someone's doing something that's immoral or illegal, I'll call them out on it all day long. Now, the other thing that happens here is this is a new world, and it's a and this is a binary world of sound bites. Mm-hmm. That's what we've done. We've created this bina- binary world of sound bites. When most answers that you want to give as a human being aren't one sentence or two sentence on the far left or far right or far light or far dark like there's going to be you have to explain things a little bit more and but when you take these binary sound bites everyone's immediately thrown into an extreme category on the far left or the far right as and as soon and here's the bad part here's the really bad part as soon as you get thrown into one of those camps then ha- the other camp stops listening to you completely yeah. They stop listening to you anything you say. So you could you could make a great point, but if you're on the other side, doesn't matter. No one's listening. They don't want to hear it because mm-hmm. you're on the other side. You're the enemy. It's a binary world. You're either with me or against me, and there's no in between. So that's kind of what we've created. And what I would rather do is have people actually listen to what I say broadly and make their own choices rather than me trying to force an opinion down their throat. This is the way it is. This is the way it should be. And by the way, just like leadership, you can't force people, you can't force an opinion down someone's throat. It doesn't work. You can't, sure, it'll work for 30 seconds. It'll work for five minutes. It'll work for five days in a leadership position. Yeah, you better do what I say. My way is right. Eventually, that kind of leadership does not work. And it's the same thing with trying to force an opinion down someone's throat. If you listen to what I'm saying, 
You can form your own opinion. And I would rather have you do that because that's going to be stronger than some opinion that I tried to force down your throat. Which doesn't work, by the way. So I would rather people listen to me and not just sound bikes and see where I'm coming from holistically and see where they can agree and disagree and see what feedback they give me. Because, by the way, I could be wrong about something, which I have no problem with. But I would rather do that. I would rather have that approach than join the pack, whichever pack that is. Join the pack on the street and bark loudly like the rest of the dogs. I have no interest in doing that. So, there you go. Agree. <laughs> Dang, bro. <laughs> yeah, and it's funny, man. You're you're like one of the few people who I mean, I, you know, like that whole thing. I mean, to sum that up, I mean, I've heard that before, where someone would be like, "Hey, I'm you know, I'm like this whatever." But it's so very, it's so few people that actually. St- do that the way the way you do even in real life like in real life like you you don't even when political stuff will come up it's real obvious that you didn't jump into any net specific group yeah so well it, this this really ties back to last week's podcast of getting involved in things that don't matter, matter yeah. and there is there's just so much out there that doesn't matter now where you have to be careful is that th- that There's so many things that don't matter, but what I am not saying, that little things don't matter. You see what I'm saying? There's a huge disparity between those two things. There's a lot of things that don't matter. What I am not saying is that little things don't matter because there are little things that do matter. And the classic example that we brought up over and over and again on this podcast is like, oh, the Russian soldier's not shaving in Chechnya and how that led to their Eventually, okay, not gonna shave. Now we're not gonna clean our weapons. Now we're, now we're not gonna stay awake on our watch. Now we're not gonna execute the missions we're being told to do. Now we're getting beat. Yeah. There are little things that matter. But if I'm barking all day long about things that don't matter, then we have a problem. We have a problem. Now I'll tell you something else. There's been some issues that have come up lately. There was one issue that I was going to address on the podcast, but and I still might address it, because it's a small problem that I see as being a more significant problem. And if it continues down the road, but but luckily at this point, there's there's a whole pack of dogs barking about it. (laughs) It wasn't like it wasn't like I noticed this problem and no one else saw it. It was like I noticed this problem, so did millions of other people, and they all those dogs start barking. Okay, so now what am I gonna do? Bark with them? Yeah. It's like, okay, now if there comes a time where all of a sudden I realize there's one of these small things that matter or big things that matter that I don't see getting the traction that it needs, well then I will absolutely say, hey, this is what I think about this situation. Generally, there's so many people barking and they're barking about the same thing. They're barking about a lot of things that don't matter. They're barking about some things that matter and right now, unless, I mean, what, what do I say all the time? The less, the less you speak, the more people listen. Yeah. So if I want to give my, my opinion on the daily news every hour on the hour, no one's listening to anything I've got to say. And then it's a waste. It's a waste. It's a waste of my time because there's more import, there are more important things. When we, can, when we can dive into human nature through the lens of war, through the lens of leadership, through the war of atrocity, if we can learn and teach people about the past so that we can prevent it from happening in the future, that to me is infinitely more impactful than barking about some current event that's happening that's gonna be gone in a week. It's, it's amazing how, fa- how fast stuff comes up on the radar, it's all over the headlines, and in a week it's gone. In a week it's gone. Yeah. So I'm just not gonna play that game. I have, I, I, I don't, it, there's no point in doing it. Dang, that's, that's a really good way to put it. It's like these current events, uh, most of the time, seem to be shaped in a way to just for dogs to bark about. You know, like they that's what are. it is. Like here, and then then they bark, and the next thing, you know, yeah. Okay, bark about this now. The the sound bite thing is really interesting too. That everything is a sound bite, mm. and it either puts you in one camp or the other camp. Mm. And the fact of the matter is, you can't put me in a camp. Yeah. You can't because yeah. I got beliefs that you don't understand <laughs> on one side on the other side Yeah, you know, and so well, you can't talk to me about that kind of thing You can't not that you can't talk to me. You can't put me in a camp mm-hmm. But the instinct of the 
world right now is take that person and put him in a camp. Mm. I'm not going in the camp. That's what's happening. If you want to figure out what I'm thinking, listen to what I'm saying about, listen to what I'm saying in hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours where I talk about human nature, right? If you want to figure that out and then you want to ask me a pointed question about something, cool, ask it, bring it. If it's something that's going to, if it's a, if it's a bark, if you want me to bark about something, I'm probably not going to bark about it. Mm. So what? Throwing you in a camp, all you'd have is a whole lot of unhappy campers? No. You throw me in a camp, if you put me in one camp, the other camp doesn't listen anymore. Yeah. And that and that means their minds are closed, so they're not going to, and, and is, if the fact of the matter is, there's there's good people in, in both camps. Yeah. And, and, both people can be, can be, can, can change and can, can accept new ideas if their mind is open. If yeah. their mind isn't open, they are just stay in their camp yeah. and everyone else. I mean, when you watch the extremes of either camp right now, it's, it's like, it's like, really? Yeah. It's, it's bizarro world. Yeah, it's kind of odd, yeah. So you, okay. you just sit there and say, okay, what, well, why am I going to play that game? Yeah. Let's just become better people that understand people better and we'll make better, uh, make the place, make the world better. Can't disagree. Okay, check. Yeah, the whole ha- unhappy campers, that was me more making a joke. I dig it. Um, yeah, no, yeah, it was man. a good attempt at humor. Uh, well, actually, no, it wasn't. It was a failure, <laughs> but that's cool. Uh, what was the, the other point you made? Uh, sometimes it's better to just just try, you know, and... And oh, the, see the what humor up. thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 See yeah. what up? Now I know. Yeah, now you know. Don't try that again. Yeah. No more jokes from Echo I've, Charles. I've learned from my my mistakes. Anyway, next question. What is the best way to break through a plateau in jujitsu? I'm stuck doing the same moves against the same training partners and have the same moves done to me. Beating the same guys and getting beat by the same guys. What should I do? What should he do? Well, I'll tell you what I would do. <sighs> Go on a crazy training binge. Yeah, take take a week off from work and train eight hours a day. Just get crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure you're healthy, and then take a week off and train eight hours a day like nuts. <laughs> That's number one. Number two, you could also opposite take a short break, take mm-hmm. a little time. Don't take a long break. Take a little step back. That's another option. Another option is. Only start working on certain moves. Like only utilize one. Like okay, so every time you get uh, arm lock from the bottom, you you got you're a guard player. Don't play guard anymore. Yeah, don't play guard anymore. Yeah. Uh, start just look. I'm not gonna play guard. Every time I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna get a. I'm gonna go for a single leg from the bottom like Dean does. I'm gonna do that every time until I start making it work. That's mm-hmm. what I'm gonna do. And if I get choked a thousand times, that's fine because mm-hmm. I'm gonna get better at it eventually. And the other thing is train like you know you get your little click of training partners at your gym start training with some of the other people that have different body styles and different body shapes so you get used to you have to bring out a new part of your game the first one that I talked about training binge eight hours a day I know it's hard for people to actually make that happen it's not for everybody the 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 times that I've done that the first time I did it I actually it was the time that I taught the uh, the Jocko the jiu-jitsu sure. for offense the jiu-jitsu offense for combat killing operations the Jocko course sure. and I trained these guys it was a small group it's like five of us and we trained all day and one of the guys was equivalent to me uh, Dan he was like we were both like blue belts mm. and so we not only we were teaching people but we were training long mm. and like my jiu-jitsu visibly got better in a mm. in a five-day period hmm because I trained super hard for five straight days. So that's a cool way. You could probably do it for a weekend, you know, probably just like a three, take a Friday off, train Friday, Saturday, Sunday, eight hours a day, work yeah. on some stuff. Yeah. Be careful, you know, because you, you, you get your overuse injuries and or you get when you're tired, you're more likely to get hurt, so you gotta use a little caution, but yeah, those are some good ways to break your plateaus in jiu-jitsu, which we all, we all hit. Yeah. One way to know that you're breaking your plateau is you're gonna get worse first. You're gonna get. Yeah. You're gonna lose. You're gonna lose to some of these guys that you have been tapping because yeah. you're trying something new. Yeah, full. Yeah, that is an indicator for sure. The, I like the do certain moves or omit certain moves because, like, it's a natural thing where, like, you when you're, you're when you're ascending, right? When you're when you're training, mm-hmm. um, you kind of settle into a certain type of game, 
you know, so maybe, yeah, you like to play guard a lot. Maybe you like to get the triangle from the guard a lot. That's your kind of go-to, you know, where it almost, it becomes sort of this almost like a muscle memory kind of thing where it's like, boom, you'll pull guard. Your routine in a row, no matter who you're going against, it's real similar all the time, right? Um, so, yeah, if you start omitting that stuff where it's like, okay, I'm not, I won't go for that triangle anymore. I'll play guard, but I cannot do the triangle. So it forces you to do other stuff. And then sometimes, depending on your experience, you might have two, three, four go tos, right? So you still, you're still kind of trapped in that same plateau mm -hmm. by if you just omit one move. So in that case, you think of a move that you might notice other people getting a lot, not necessarily on you, but you know, just in general, and be like, hey, I'm, that's all I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. I can't get any other submission. I can't. I can only do, I don't know, the guillotine, for example. Right. Let's say you, you just don't do guillotines that much or whatever. I know you can't relate to that. But <laughs> you say, okay, I'm only going for guillotine. If I'm like in my guard, I can't really like, I can't really get a guillotine th from the guard or whatever. It, it, put it this way. If you're not good at guillotines, that'll force you to find ways to get yeah. the guillotine. It'll yeah. just force you. And then if you do that for, uh, I don't know, I would say maybe even like three months, maybe even six months. Mm hmm Brian Sargent was like, hey, yeah, like I, what I did, I, cause he like, he likes to play on top, smash from the top. Mm -hmm. uh, he was like, I didn't just for six months. I just didn't play on top. Mm -hmm. Well, that might've been you who said that. I don't know. One of you guys said that. That definitely happened with me. Yeah. It definitely happened with me. I didn't like being on the bottom. Yeah. And then I just, just like, okay. Yeah. No sweeps allowed. Um, no, like starting from the top. If you're, no. if you're starting, you pull guard, that's mm -hmm. it. Like, no, that's your rule. And that's the thing. It's hard to like. It's hard to come to training unless you have this plan in your mindset. It's hard to come to training and be like, you know what? I, I think I'm going to just only play guard today if, like, you don't like guard. Because mm -hmm. it's like, I don't want to get, like, tapped out in front of everybody, you know, especially when you just got your purple belt, yeah. you know, or something like this. It's hard to do that. But, yeah, if you just make up your mind, kind of think of it long term, like I'm playing the long game here and just only go for that certain move that you want to get good at. That's all you're doing. It'll That'll bust you past the plateau easy. It'll, I don't know about easy. Well, It'll, yeah, it it's a good way to work easy. through your plateau. But I think that's a very high probability that you'll you'll get past it. Yeah, yeah. And also, uh, but it's not easy. No, no, it's all you just it's said all bust work. through your plastic plateau easy. It's not easy. Yeah, but it's what, actually hard. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and and I dig. I it. just don't. I just want to make sure people aren't like, oh, you know, Echo said to just try one move and then it's going to be easy to break. The, no, yeah, no, that's no, actually no. not true. Yeah, that, that's it's actually hard to. It's a is a. It's hard to not just resort back to what you're good at, and b when you don't resort to what you're good at, you get your ass kicked yes. on a regular basis, which is not fun. Yeah, which, so it ain't easy. Yeah. And that easily could be the two main challenges of going through jujitsu journeys. Those two things. Yeah. Arguably. Um, yes, you are right. Correct. That is absolutely correct. If that's what you mean by easy. What I kind of sort of meant was you'll, <sighs> the, the probability spot, of breaking past. There's is this high. surf spot that I surf at. Yes. And one of the ways to get out of the water is dangerous. But fast. fast yeah, gotcha. The other way to get out of the water is m mellow, but it's a longer walk. Yeah. And I was surfing with my buddy, Stoner. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, hey, which way is it easier to get out? And I said, well, bro, it depends it on what depends you mean by easier. What you mean by easy, yes, sir. Because one of them's not more than a few steps once you're good. Yeah. But getting good is getting to that point. Is, yeah. is a challenge the yeah. other way is real easy but it's a long walk <laughs> so it just depends what you mean by easy yeah yeah so i mean to me probability wise let's say if you chose to break through your plateau by going to another gym to train with all different guys that would get you past your plateau but yeah. i think if you did this thing where you omit a certain move or you just add a move that you're not good and that's only what if you did that and really committed to it correctly which is hard by the way, mentally, but if you did that, I think, I think you, the, the probability of you breaking past your plateau and ending up at a further uh, place in regards to progress is much higher if you did that. Yeah, yeah. That's what I think. And that's what I meant by easy, which I guess, yeah, that, Depend, I shouldn't use the word easy. Depends what you mean by easy. Depends what you mean by Also, uh, do tournaments, plenty. If you do a lot of tournaments, mm -hmm. bro, you'll, you'll bust past, past the plateau. Yeah. Weaknesses sure. will be exposed. Yeah. And it's like, your your mind will be way more at ease in training too. It'll be like more open. Yeah. It's weird. For sure, I think so. Anyway, next question. 
How do you apply the principle of building a relationship with your boss when your boss doesn't value relationships? For example, he consistently avoids interactions that don't lead directly to a deliverable on a current objective. He avoids all other interactions, such as those that are for the purpose of building relationships and chemistry within the team. Okay. What would I do in that situation? Well, then obviously what I would do is I would build a relationship based on deliverable current objectives. <laughs> right? If that's what he's into, I'm going to make that ha- happen. Like I'm going to be the guy that he thinks can get this to happen. And that's what our relationship is going to be based on. And I'm fine with that. When he wants to talk about work, I'll talk about work. Mm-hmm. I had bosses like that. I had plenty of bosses like that. And what do you do when you have bosses like that? You play the game. Like, okay, we're going to, let's just make this happen. Let's do this. Now, let me say this. Because he isn't personable, this means that you have to be more personable, not so much with him, but with the rest of the team. Because there's a lacking element within the team that you, as a good team player and team member and leader, whether you're in a positional leadership or just a human leader, you can improve the team by building some of that human connection that bonds the team more. So even though my boss is impersonable and is just about the business and just about the current objective, that's fine with me. I'm gonna do my best to support him and make him realize that I'm gonna got the guy that's gonna make those objectives work and I'm gonna build the human connection with the rest of the team, which will make our team stronger. Now, I am not going to offend my boss by being the guy that is more popular than him. Hmm. Some people have some some people that have the attitude that this individual is talking about. What would you call this person? Um, just just like 100% work focused. Hmm. So if I got a guy that's 100% work focused, sometimes that kind of boss finds the person that wants to chat annoying. Yeah, yeah. Right? Annoying. Which is possible. Mm-hmm. So you don't want to you don't want to be you don't want to annoy the boss and he thinks all oh, this oh this guy Jago he just wants to build friends. He's not yeah. here to work. No, you got to be careful about that. Mm-hmm. And, I, and and the weird thing is honestly, I'm very work focused. I'm very work focused. And I have to like I don't really have to do it anymore, but I used to like I have to consciously think about okay, on top of actually I still do have to do it sometimes. You know, like, I have to consciously think about, like, okay, I also need to, like, be nice and build relationship with the person that I don't normally interact with, right? Mm -hmm. So you you do have to do that. So form the relationship with the rest of the team, the good relationship, and then form the best relationship that you can with the boss, and that is going to help the whole team. That's it. It's as simple as that. And I'll say one more thing about this. You don't get to pick your leader, generally. You don't get to pick your leader. But you can pick the relationship that you have with your leader. Yeah. So if what your leader's into, let's get in the game. Let's build a good relationship. Uh, once again, if someone's out there thinking, oh, so you just want me to kiss ass, what I'm saying is not that I want you to kiss ass. I'm saying I want you to win. That's what I'm saying. Because the better relationship you build with your boss, the more influence you have over him, the better chance you have of getting promoted, the better chance you have of, of accomplishing the mission and taking care of your team. That's that's the way it works. Mm-hmm. Why do I want to get promoted? So I can get more money for myself? No, I want to get promoted so I can do the mission so I can take care of my team. That's why I want to get promoted. Mm-hmm. If it was just about like taking care of myself, I wouldn't go work for this guy. I'd go find another job and pick a different boss because you do get to pick your boss. You can quit your job. Mm-hmm. Quit your day job. So that's what you do. You build that relationship. Yeah. Hard as it is. Get so. Yeah, that's a good point with the de- with the kind of the details of it where you can't just start trying to chat the guy up. No, during he's work not. Time. He doesn't like that. Yeah, no one does actually. Yeah. Even if you're a social person, but you're let's say you're just focused on something, you know. Mm-hmm. And... I don't know. You focus on, and then your friend calls you. 
And you're like, oh, they called me. It might, might be important. Yeah, why are you Meanwhile, talking? Yeah, and they're telling you about, you know, the episode of whatever last night. And you're like, Brad, I'm, I'm working right now. Brad, I don't watch TV. Don't yeah. call me again. Oh, yeah. Now, now you're going to step step further <laughs> than I had in mind. But I'm just saying that that's annoying no matter who you yeah. are. So if you're thinking, you know, uh, this boss is like, he d- he doesn't like to, quote, unquote, build, a, build relationships and, like, all this stuff. He's only, then you're going to, you re- run that risk of annoying him. Yes, you got to be. That's what I said. You got to be careful. a big step back. Dichotomy. Dichotomy. There's a dichotomy. Me. But there's little, and usually it has to do with time too, you know. So if you go in and you just go just little digs of like relationship building stuff, but not don't take, don't go in there and be like, hey, did you catch the game last night? Don't yeah. do that stuff. I don't want to talk like, about bro, the game. I don't, I don't care. And stuff. But you know, I don't know. Nice tie. Boom out. You know, kind of thing. I don't know. Don't say nice tie. I don't know. No, don't. Yeah. yeah. Next question. The guy that's. A high level worker does not want to hear about his tie. Yeah. Does not care about his tie. Yeah, but that the, actually annoys a lot of people. But yeah, and uh, and I don't know. I haven't been in the corporate <laughs> scenario. And, uh, I think my whole life. But <laughs> so I don't know. That just seemed like something on the movies. Once they you might gave say. a long thing about your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't corporate. That was yeah. in a nightclub. Well, but still, yeah, leadership. Yeah, same kind for sure. And the point is, there's things you can say that don't take up his time and necessarily his his full attention to annoy him that you can say or do. Is what I'm saying. I don't know what that is because I don't, I don't, I don't work with you guys. But <laughs> check. Next question. Hey, Jocko, my boss is trying to implement. I say boss because it's, it's highlighted. My boss. I don't know why it's it's highlighting all my bosses. Man. So. <laughs> <laughs> it works, man. Somebody was talking about on social media about how you said peas. <laughs> You're like, I went to the grocery store. I got some peas. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, hey, you know. It's a, it's a you know, variable yeah. thing. I don't know Check. why I say that. Nonetheless. Variable escalation. Sure. My boss is trying to implement a process that I see the end result not being what is needed, and I have proposed an alternative that is proven and will add value to the company. Do I give up trying to position to get the outcome we need, or do I commit to help implement his process and wait for the outcome, then try again? It is a relatively small failure in the big picture outcome, but would like some input on how to get the results we need long term. Very cool question. And so, yeah, you got a scenario where your boss wants to do something. You know you got a better idea that'll work better. What do you do? Well, for, first of all, any way that I can make my idea and his idea, that's what I'm going to try and do. Mm-hmm. So you have to be careful. And again, I don't know. Your boss might be an open-minded person. If you've got a good leader, you can go in there and say, hey, boss, this is what you're trying to make happen. I think this will work better. And your boss may be like, oh, wow, that's a great, that's a great idea. You know what? Let's go with you. That there's there's leaders like there out there that make it happen you're probably not asking this question if you have that kind of boss you're probably talking about someone that has a little bit more ego thinks they thinks they know a little bit more and not really open-minded to new ideas and that's why making your idea into his idea is going to be a better option don't try and force your idea and one thing you could do is you could you could ask questions and and i've talked about this before but like you say something like, you know, hey, hey, boss, I want to make sure that I'm supporting this in the best way possible. So I really want to understand this fully. So can you explain this here to me and why we're doing it like that? And then, you know, you have a conversation with your boss and then you go, oh, and maybe your boss has some good points that you didn't understand. Or maybe that opens the door for you to say, hey, boss, the way that this other group is doing it is like this. Do you think we could try that? Or you say, if you want to ego them up a little bit, it's like, hey, boss, you know, I, I don't. I don't fully understand this, you know, as well as you do. Could you just help me understand why we're doing it this way? Mm. And then once again, what you're doing is you're starting a conversation. If you can't get the message across in that indirect manner, you can be a little bit more direct, but be careful when you're direct with people. They dig in, man. They dig in, especially with anyone with any kind of ego. Ego. They dig in. You tell them your idea, and they just all of a sudden they they come up with reasons not to do it. Yeah. And you have to be careful. That's why you have to use caution when you reveal your plan. Mm. It's, it's better to not even reveal it as your plan. It's better to reveal it as like an idea and then let it become their plan. Mm-hmm. Don't reveal your emotions. Okay, now if all that fails, this guy's just dead set in, hey, we're, no, we're doing it my way. Shut up, Echo. We're, no, we're not listening to your plan. We're doing it my way. Then what you do? Yeah, you go all in. You support it the best of your ability. You 
you try and learn what they want you try and execute what they want you try and understand what they want better than anyone else including him so that way you go out you execute you know where all the weaknesses are now you learn and now you can come back with a better argument or a better seed to plant in their head hey boss I know your plan it's working really really well one thing that we could do to make it even better I think what do you think of this if we did XYZ instead of XYB I think it might work a little bit better. What do you think? And then you st- again, you you plant this, you plant the team, and maybe I mean you plant the seed, and maybe you can incorporate. You know, there's times where there's times where I did this. Oh, that's what you want to do, boss. Cool, got it. Yep, that's what I'm gonna do. Go and do something. Same result, get the same result, but do it a different way. Mm. You know, it's the ask for better to ask for forgiveness than right. permission. Yeah, mm. than than permission. So sometimes it's like. It's like the began we're going back to the idea of things that don't matter mm-hmm. if my boss wants me to do it one way And I can do it just a little bit different and no one's gonna know and it's gonna be all good and our mm-hmm. results gonna be the better or the same mm-hmm. I'm probably just gonna be like hey boss I got it and then hey boss yeah on the fly we made a little call here We went with a y b or you know zda instead of zdb uh, I hope it's not you know bad, but here's the results by the way We we did it in even shorter time mm-hmm. and the boss goes. Oh, yeah, that's cool. It's no big deal because yeah. he sees the results and he wants to take a little bit of credit for him. Yeah. So, again, what's this about? This is about b- building the relationship. So, let me ask you this. This is this is important. A good question to ask yourself. Will what will help the team more? What will help the team more? Will it help the team more to disrupt the relationship and undermine the boss? Will that will that help the team? No. Will it help the team if you create an antagonistic relationship with your boss? No, that won't help your team Will it help your team if you build a relationship with your boss if you unify the team if you strengthen the team and you bring everyone together Will that help the team? Yes, it'll help the team. Will that build a relationship with your boss? Yes It'll build a relationship with your boss if you have a better relationship with your boss is your boss more likely to Accept the influence that you're throwing at him. Yes, absolutely so I think that's something you can ask yourself a lot is what I am trying to do gonna help the team or hurt the team and you actually have to look at those two in the long term in the short term because sometimes you do something that hurts the team right now and it'll help the team later like for instance hey we're gonna fire a guy everyone loves him but and it's gonna disrupt the team but long term we'll be better off mm-hmm. sometimes that works sometimes it's like we're gonna fire this guy Everyone loves him and it's gonna be a long-term down. It's gonna be a long-term detriment that you made this call So you have to check yourself and check what's gonna help the long-term short-term of the team Is it gonna make it better is it gonna make it worse in this case? Try to make your plan your boss's plan if you can't then support build relationships and influence over the long term Especially because this guy very smart to mention that this is a relatively small failure yeah. Like this isn't a huge risk doesn't he you can hey boss, you know what we got it done didn't quite got come the same way Here's where we're going. So very good question Interesting. Next question similar question. Yeah, this is why I grouped this one together too. We had a couple grouped questions This is one of them cool. Jocko. I was wondering what your advice is for disagreeing up the chain of command Obviously, this needs to be done with some tact ie in private not in front of others but in those private conversations, how should one respectfully disagree? Again, that's again similar question. A better technique than disagreeing is just to ask questions. You know, boss, hey, I, I want to make sure I get this right. Can you explain it to me again? Can you can you watch me do it? Mm-hmm. Right. So your boss actually sees what the problem is. Uh, that way, you're you're not being offensive. Can, hey, boss, can you explain why you chose this course of action? I really want to learn from from what you did, what you the way you do it. I again does that sound like a kiss ass yes because I'm exaggerating you know what I mean yeah. hey boss you're so incredibly smart Can you please? <laughs> no I'm not talking about that because bosses don't like kiss, ass kisses yeah. either, at least good yeah. bosses mm. good bosses don't and actually even good bosses they might keep their kiss asses around but they don't respect them so you don't gain influence by being a kiss ass yeah. it's not a good situation so I'm not talking about kissing ass but you know hey boss I'm really want to understand this and make sure I understand it can you can you explain to me why this is the best way to make this to do this versus the other way you know that's 
the kind of question. That's not kissing ass. That's actually, you know what is actually legitimately wanting to know. Yeah. Like I legitimately want to know. Maybe, you know, what if we, instead of assuming that we know better than our boss, what if we assume that my boss knows better than me? Let's make that assumption. And if you communicate with that assumption, then you're probably going to communicate in a much better way yeah. than communicating with the assumption that my boss is an idiot and I know better than him. Yeah. Which is not a good way to communicate. Yeah. It's funny when you, like, now that you kind of said that about the kiss ass guy, because mm-hmm. that comes up a lot. Mm-hmm. Cause I don't want to be kiss ass. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you don't. The kiss ass guy is the same thing as being friend zoned. You know what friend zone mean? Yeah, I do. It's the same thing. Yeah. So like the girl, right? Typically, it's a guy who gets friend zoned, right? Because yeah, yeah. he's like too nice. He's too nice. He's too whatever. He'll. It's. He's a. He's essentially a. An, You're like a brother to an me. Intimate. Yes, man. That's what he is. So yeah. of course the girl's gonna keep him around for all this like good feeling superficially. Yeah, by the way, mention lunch, <laughs> all that stuff, all the superficial stuff. He's not gonna get anywhere of legitimacy with her. Right. Actual decision makings, if you translate that into the you know work environment or whatever, where yeah, the boss. I mean, a certain kind of boss, just like a certain girl is going to keep a guy around for that reason. A certain boss is going to be like, yeah, I'll keep him around. I feel a little bit bad even firing the guy like that, a little bit, because he's just so nice to me. Mm-hmm. He gives me all these compliments, and even in in a in a weird way, I think the kiss ass guy kind of knows that too. You know, like how why would he ever fire me? Even yeah, though he's yeah, not yeah, that good sure. at his job or whatever, right? Um, because. You know, he can't fire me. I'm just too nice to him. You know, there's that, that feeling is floating around is what I'm saying. But it's the same deal, right? Like it's too many yeah. compliments. You're too much of a yes man. I'll keep you around for very superficial reasons, but yeah. that's it, brother. Yeah. You you don't get past. Yeah, that's and that's not a good no place to be in. No, it's not, sir. That's why I'm not saying kiss ass. And, and the way I just explained that of, of actually assuming that your boss knows more than you is, is a good way to approach the situation. Yeah. As opposed to approaching the situation like you know more than your boss. Yeah. Why act like that? Dude, the outcome is not going to be inferior. The outcome is inferior. Yeah. The outcome of, of acting like your boss or assuming that your boss knows more than you, yeah. the outcome is you treat them with respect. Because the other way, you could try and treat them with respect, uh, respect but inadvertently you sound like, you know some people, I just uh, we, we talk about normal face, right? Some people, they cannot even ask a question in a in a respectful way, right? Yeah. They can't even. What, what was I saying over here? They can't even say, you know, hey boss, can you explain this to me? Because I really want to. They can't even say that, you know. Hey boss, can you explain this to me? Because this doesn't make any sense. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like they can't totally even. It, yeah. They can't even ask a question in a respectful way. Yeah, that's a skill you should master yeah, as sense. a leader and as a follower. As a leader and as a follower, how to ask questions in a respectful way. Leif pointed this out. Leif pointed out, we were talking about the fact of, of I would say, it's a story he's told a bunch of times of going through the kill house and he's in the back of the train and you shouldn't be in the back of the train. You should be somewhere where you can lead everyone because when you're in the back of the train, you don't know what's happening in the front of the train. Of assaulters, a big group of people moving through a kill house. Mm-hmm. And I didn't, and he goes, you know, Jocko didn't say, hey, stop doing that and do it this other way. He's like, he asked me questions. And he's like, they were real questions. Mm. I wasn't like, hey, Leif, why the hell are you in the back of the train? Yeah, yeah, Is that yeah. a respectful question? Mm-hmm. No, it's not a respectful question. Mm-hmm. But it's like, hey, Leif, w- what are you doing in the back of the train? Yeah. Hey, this is a respectful question. I, I'm actually assuming that maybe Leif, who doesn't have the experience that I have, who's my subordinate, as a platoon commander, to me, the big task unit commander, yeah. my assumption is not that I know more than him. My assumption is that he's got a reason for that. Yeah. My assumption is that he knows more than me. Yeah. Which, well, this is one of the one of Jordan Peterson's twelve rules for life. It's like, uh, I think it's assume the person that you're talking to knows more than you. Mm-hmm. What I'm saying is the same thing. Up and down the chain of command, you assume that your boss or your subordinate knows something that you don't know. Yeah. And if you can if you can ask questions in that way instead of asking questions, boss, what are we doing this for? Yeah. Or Leif, why are you doing that? Leif, why are you in the back of the train? That's stupid. No. Yeah. It's like, hey Leif, why are you in the back of the train? What do you what is what is your purpose of being back there? Yeah. I, I genuinely genuinely want to know. And and this isn't like I'm not even saying I'm acting like that. I truly genuinely want to know yeah. what the deal is. Yeah. So make the assumption up and down the chain of command that your boss, your subordinate knows more than you and then ask good questions with true, genuine curiosity that you want to know the answers to. It's a good way to go about it. I agree. 
next question. Next question. I'm a young warehouse manager that takes ownership for anything and everything that goes wrong. This seems to offend my coworkers. How can I fix it? Um, okay. Classic dichotomy leadership question right there. Mm. You've gone too far. That's what's happened. Mm. You've gone too far. So what you have to be, what you have to do is don't be offensive when you take ownership. When you take ownership, you can't be offensive. <laughs> when you take ownership, some people get offended by that. So when you say, hey, you know what, this is mine, I got this. That bothers some people. When you say, you know what, this is my fault and I'm gonna fix it. That, even that offends some people. What, the tone? Just the tone yeah, yeah. of like, no, this is hey, my fault, I got this. Mm-hmm. And you do that three, da- three times, four times, five times, and all of a sudden because, oh, what, everything's his fault, and that is, he's got to fix everything. They, he doesn't think I can fix it. Right. Yeah. You can offend people with, eh, with, <laughs> with all kinds of stuff. Yeah, you don't yeah. have to work very hard to offend people. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's people get offended when you say something nice to them. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I was watching, uh, I met, I met, you ever seen the yoga dude that does like, Yoga videos. He's got red hair. His name is Spears. Yeah, yeah. I met him just randomly uh, getting off a plane. But he's he. What I is I th- it Spears or Sears? Se- Sears. I think yeah. it's Sears. Maybe. Spe- what yeah. I say, Spears. Yeah, I, I, I don't yeah. know because I know the guy though. Yeah, yeah. He's it's re- a he's spiritual funny. AF on yeah, his yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very, funny. very funny guy. Very cool guy. And I was once I met him, I was laughing. I was checking out a couple of his videos, but one of them was you know how to be offended. Yeah, yeah, at all things, and it's 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 hilarious <laughs> so funny, yeah. because that's exactly what people, people, some people can get offended by anything. Yeah. So that's what you got to watch out for. Even when you're taking ownership, people can actually be offended by that if you go too far. So instead of overtly stepping up and taking ownership in this particular case, and you can tell what what's going on here. My brother here, young warehouse manager, he's fired up. He wants to make things happen. He wants to get after it. And so what does he do? He's like, oh, I read extreme ownership. I'm going to take ownership of everything. And that's a great attitude to have. Yeah. Except for you can offend people when you go too far. Because you got to read the second book that I got in your leadership <laughs> so that you can, yeah. you can balance that out a little bit. So instead of saying like, hey, this is mine. I'm going to take ownership of this and make it happen. Yeah. Instead, you, you, know, you look and so, you, you say, hey, you know what? Do you want me to take care of this? Oh, it, hey, you know what? That's probably in my department. You want me to take care of that? So that way, you know, it, or like, hey, it seems like this should be something I should take care of. You want me to handle that? Instead of me, 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 me. I got asked a question the other day at a Q&A. And the, the question started off with, uh, the, the person started the question with, I've got the most, I've got the question that everyone in here needs answered. So, so so out of the gate, <laughs> I was like, okay, so we have a situation here, right? Yeah, yeah, because yeah. that immediately tells you that in that person's head, they've got they've they've got the question that everyone needs answered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's already an ego scenario happening, like out of the gate. So same thing here. You don't know if you're going to touch someone's egos, right? Yeah. So when you say, "Look, this is my deal, and I'm going to fix it," like some people will take offense to that. So again, you soften those a little bit. You try and give credit. Up the chain of command, right? Try and give credit down the chain of command. Instead of, I'll take ownership. It's like, hey, we got, what if you say we? When when credit gets doled out, get past that credit on, pass it to your peers, pass it to your subordinates, pass it to your boss. So that's it. Take ownership. What you need to do at this point, young man, is take ownership of being offensive. Yeah. And when you do that, you're going to be less offensive. You're going to be more covert. Hey, guess what? Remember I said earlier, like, you don't get to pick the boss. You you don't get to pick your boss. Mm. You, But you get to pick the relationship you have. You don't get to pick your, your peers. You don't get to pick your subordinates. You get your team. Hey, can you pick them? Yes, you can quit your job. Can you hire the right people? Yes, you can. But look, what you got is what you got. You got to work with it. You don't, everyone, uh, man, I wish everyone was more fired up like I am. Like, that's not going to go well. Yeah. You know, it's, it does, it's great that you wish that. Yeah. That's not going to go well. What you have to do is you got to, you got to, you got to, here's another one. This is similar, right? 
Millennials. <laughs> Well, hey, one of the things, one of the things, this is a very simple, you know, I've done, I've done the Millennium questions a thousand times. And, and, you know, the Vietnam veterans, the Vietnam draftees compared to the, like, hey, we can talk about that again. We don't need to. But if you've got a, if you're in charge of Millennials and you think to yourself, Millennials thinks everything's, they think everything centers around them. Well, what do you do as a leader? You know what I do as a leader? I make everything center around them. And then they perform and then they get after it and as they grow up They learn that everything doesn't center around them, but I bring them there Why because I form a relationship why because I listen to them why because I understand them So you don't get the team that you want you don't get the boss that you want what you do is you play the game up and down the chain of command and form relationships up and down the chain of command that you want What relationships do you want from up the chain of command? You want them to listen to you. You want them to give you what you need. You want them to get out of your way and let you do the mission. What about down the chain of command? You want them to support what's happening. You want them to get after their job. You want them to step up and lead. That's what you want. Mm. If you have an antagonistic relationship because your millennials think everything's about them, well, then guess what? You're not going to be able to have any influence on them, any real influence. You can have the imposed will on them. Mm Mm-hmm. But the imposed will is a is a paper tiger, right? It's mm-hmm. not real. Mm-hmm. It only lasts when you're there. And guess what they're doing? They're looking for another job. Mm-hmm. So take ownership of being offensive and be less offensive and more covert. And ca- you know what, bro? Young warehouse manager, keep getting after it. And it will pay off. Mm-hmm. And the fact that you're fired up and you're crushing it, crush it with a little bit more tact. And you're gonna one day you're gonna be making it happen. Yeah. What do we got time for? Uh, one more question. Yeah. To add though a little tip, I think that I think you taught this to. Me. Actually, I, I realized this when I embraced extreme ownership. Mm-hmm. You can't say, "Hey, I'm gonna take extreme ownership of this." Like it's it's one of those things. It's like just like taking the high ground, right? Yeah, yeah. You get in like a thing with somebody. Yeah, yeah. You can't say I'm going to take, gonna the, take high the high ground, ground yeah, and yeah. then y- it doesn't work like that. No. Like it, it ruins. You just it. gave up the high ground when you announced that you were taking the high ground. Gave it up exactly right. Same thing with extreme yeah, ownership. Yeah, yeah. Like in point. these situations. So if that's you're a very good point, Echo. Charles. And the thing is, I get it, man. When you're like, you know, I'm taking. And he even said, I take ownership of anything and everything yeah. that goes wrong. Anything like straight up, he's yeah. your guy, yeah. right? So it might indicate. I'm not saying he's doing this, but he could be going. Hey guys, no worries. I'm taking extreme ownership of this situation. You know, like if you say that kind of stuff, yeah, I, I could see how that would rub somebody. What's way. odd, and this is a very good thing to understand about human nature mm-hmm. everyone's jealous of you, everyone's jealous of each other, everyone's jealous of everyone else. No one wants you to win, <laughs> right? It's just like, so yeah, when this guy that. is stepping up, the, 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 cr- the crowd starts to pick at him, they start to pick at him, and they want to yeah. pick him, they want to pull him apart. Yeah. That's generally what the crowd wants to do to you. When you step up, when you elevate yourself, generally the crowd wants to pick at you and pull you yeah. back down. Who does he that. think he is? Yeah, exactly. Mm, exactly. Yeah. exactly. So if you're aware of that, then you can combat it by when instead of elevating yourself in an overt manner where everyone can see you saying, I'm going to take ownership of this right now and get it solved. Yeah. No. You sit back and say, hey, you know what? This is probably my fault. Do you do you want me to uh, let me let me try and take some time and get it fixed? Everyone yeah. goes. They're actually kind of happy. They're like, yeah, it was your fault. Yeah. They kind of they're kind of like it's okay with them. Yeah. Whereas opposed to I'm going to take ownership. There's this is dichotomy leadership. Yeah. You read extreme ownership. Awesome. You got to read dichotomy too. <laughs> <laughs> Check. Next question. When something goes wrong, I freeze up. Opposite of the the other guy. I freeze up. I get stagnant. I don't want to move. I just ask myself, why me? I've tried saying good, but it's not getting me moving forward. Any advice? You ask yourself, why me? So, saying good, that should fix your attitude, but that alone... That will that alone will not fix your problems. <laughs> if you're having problems, sure. Say good. That's perfect. But then don't ask yourself, why me? Instead, ask yourself, now what am I going to do about it? 
What are you going to do about it? Ask yourself that question. And then figure it out. Figure out what you're going to do. Say to yourself, I am going to detach. I am going to assess the situation. I am going to come up with a plan and I am going to execute. And then start moving. It's, it's not going to be a perfect plan, but take action. Action that moves you in a positive direction. And if it ends up being the wrong direction, that's fine. At least you've learned where not to go. Now, where this gets tough is if it is something that seems like it's completely out of your control and you know what some things are completely out of your control and that's fine and when that happens you ask yourself what can I control what can I control that will make this situation a little bit better and then you go don't get crushed by things going wrong ask yourself what am I going to do and then go do it and I think that's all I've got for tonight so echo Charles speaking of uh, moving in the right direction yes I know you've got some things that can help us move in the right direction. What do you got for us? Yeah. Okay. So do jujitsu. That's it. Step That's one. a good one. So, uh, so the path has what m- many directions, but it's all in the j- same general direction. It's improvement. Mm-hmm. It's improvement. Mm-hmm. There's different roads on the path. Yes. Which is a really weird thing to say. Yeah. It's more of a general thing. Anyway, but jujitsu is universal in my opinion. I'm assuming in your opinion too. Where if you're not doing jujitsu. More so than I would say, like, that's terrible. I'm not going to say that. But I'm saying if you go through life and not do jujitsu and you're on the path, you might be left maybe missing out. You know what's really cool about this podcast yes. and about people listening to this podcast yeah. and about people starting jujitsu? This is the coolest thing. Two years ago, I would have been like, hey, you know, you should try jujitsu. It's really good. Mm-hmm. But I couldn't like confirm how yeah. universal so many people I just so many people after they take their first class or the first nine classes or the first three classes, they're like, I'm addicted. Yeah. Why is that? Because there's something special about jujitsu. Yeah. So you should train it. Yeah. Yeah. When you can draw them the, the parallels, the meta it's the metaphor for life. Yes. Literally. Dean Lister told me that early on, actually. Yeah, oh, totally interesting. Is. Dean yeah. Lister, philosopher. It is a philosopher. And, and Andre Galval illustrated some points. And a big one that Andre Galval said that I will never forget is like, jujitsu is like, is life. So consider jujitsu. Like, if you turn your back on your problems in jujitsu, they're going to get worse. And let's face it, that's in, especially early on, that's how you get a guy to turn, that's how you get a choke, right? When you're mounted on somebody, you mm-hmm. slap him in the face. Why? Mm-hmm. Why? If you get slapped in the face, what do you want to do? Turn your back, mm-hmm. right? Like, oh, don't slap my face. That's how you get the choke. So Andre Galval said, in jujitsu, you turn your back and you give your back to your opponent, that's the worst thing you can do. But it's hard to face them usually. Mm -hmm. You got to work, you know? Mm -hmm. Same thing in life, man. Turn your back on your problems. Those problems are going to get you. Yeah, and you've heard me say that at the muster. You turn your back on your problems, they don't go away. They actually get worse, and it's the same exact thing in jujitsu. And they'll choke you. Yes. Getting bigger behind your back. So it's cool now to get feedback from thousands of people that have now gotten in the jujitsu game, and Mm -hmm. the feedback... I've got probably, I think, three people out of many, many, and this isn't one of yours where you say like a lot of people and it's like four. I'm talking thousands of people. I've gotten three that don't like jujitsu. That they just don't like it. And that's why I came up with the rule. Okay, if you don't like it, that's fine. Train at least until you've submitted someone that's kind of equivalent, and then you can stop. Yeah. 
And the reason I think I think that's actually once you do that, you'll you'll understand you because sometimes you just don't even understand it. Yeah. Sometimes people just can't comprehend it. They can't can't comprehend what's happening, yes. and it's just too much. Yeah, I get this. Just too much. Yeah, and so they don't want to do it. Yeah, but if you do it long enough that you submit someone, yeah, then you get that little like wow, the power. It's incredible. Like at the muster when you when you show the connection of two moves. Yeah. It's like it's like amazing. Oh yeah, and then when you try and explain that every move is connected that way, because that's a big sort network of, of it's connections. It's a big network, but but people don't understand that jujitsu is not just moves. Yeah, that it's all this grouped thing yeah. together, this symphony of movement. Yeah, language. That was good. That's yeah. good. That's what say language. Anyway, when you do it, you're gonna need a gi. Because you're going to do gi and no gi. Mm-hmm. So gi and rash guard. That's yep. the uniform. We'll call it a uniform. Sure. So you go to origin because you're going to get an origin gi. It's the best one. Originmain.com. Origin Sometimes main. we forget com. to say that, which no. is not good. I feel like I forget to say that the name is origin. We, oh. I say origin main. Oh, okay. So cool. But y- you'll, yeah, you'll, you'll come to realize that it's very obvious that origin is the only kind of gi that you'll want slash need. All made in America, by the way, the threads are made yeah, in America. I like how you throw that out there, just like, oh, by the way, like it's made in America. No, yeah. it's not just something you throw out yeah. there. It's a big deal. We're talking about a loom. <laughs> <laughs> Multiple looms, I, actually. I actually had this, uh, so I was talking to, is actually my literary agent. Sure. And I was like, the well, literary. you know, I said it turns out, um, you know, they're not, they can't put out Mikey and the Dragons before November, so I'm just gonna, you know, mis- make this book myself. I'm starting a publishing company. Yeah, and she's like, um, "Well, you know, a lot of people try that, but you know, it's there's a lot more to it. You know, it's really hard." Yeah, and I was like, "Okay, cool. Do you know what a loom is?" I go, "My friends up in Maine br- brought a loom back from the grave and weave material from cotton and nylon to sew together." The loom weighs nine thousand. The, pounds, lo- the by loom the way. weighs nine thousand pounds. It has five million threads in going into it. It's yeah. got it's got millions of parts inside of it. It was rusted. Yeah. You're gonna tell me we can't get photocopy some <laughs> stuff and put it out in a book? I got this. I got this. Don't yeah. oh, don't. And it's funny because I told that to uh, Brian and Pete. Yeah. I was I, t- I was laughing so yeah. hard because because really what's what I c- I don't even know if I could think of something harder. Yeah. Than saying, oh, we're gonna drag a loom out of a damn b- abandoned factory in Lewiston, Maine. Yeah, one loom left. The rest of them have been sent overseas during the economic downturn. Yeah. Oh, we'll just we'll just outsource. Never mind outsource. We're just gonna send our bread and butter, our American hardware, overseas and let someone else make it. There was one loom left, and guess what? We got it. Origin. Boom. Yeah. So you're telling me that we can take this old loom that's 30 years old that hasn't been run that's rusted and dirty and abandoned and bring that thing back to life. Yep. And you're telling me we can't print some books and get them out to my people? You're wrong. Yep. Watch me. Straight up wrong. Get some Jocko publishing. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And that loom does not only make geese and rash cards by the way. Multiple looms, by the way. It wasn't just that well, one loom. No, it was one loom at oh, first. Oh, to be in with, yes. And now there's three looms. We're rocking and rolling. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, you can get shirts and joggers and sweats. Mm-hmm. Sweats uh, uh, named, named, I don't know about named. We'll say named, the most comfortable sweat in, sweats in the world, straight up. The joggers, I proclaim, straight up, most, com- most comfortable pants in the world. Nonetheless, find out for yourself. Anyway, originmain.com, they make a lot of cool, good <laughs> stuff. All made in America, by the way. Yeah, and that includes made in America supplements. Jocko supplements. <laughs> Jocko supplements. You know, the Jocko thing is just a complete, A, lack of originality. <laughs> That's what it is. Because if you think about it from a broader perspective, mm-hmm. and you know me well enough to be like, the last thing I would do is like, oh, I'm just going to call everything Jocko. <laughs> it's, well, well. It, it's like bizarro, though. Yeah. Well, and it started with right, Jocko though. Podcast. Right. It started with yeah. Jocko Podcast. And that, I've, t- I've said this before, but it, I was on Tim Ferriss's podcast, and he was, he said, like, are you hungry? And I was like, Jocko hungry. Yeah. And for some reason, that just made me chuckle. And then when we were naming this podcast, 
I was like, well, you're like, what are you going to call him? Like, Jocko Podcast. As if it's the same Neanderthal right, thing. Right. And so then then it was like, okay, we're going to make tea. Well, what do you call pomegranate white tea? What are we going to call it? Like, the Vedic solution? I mean, what are you going to call it? Like, it's like, okay, well, just it's going to be the tea that I drink, so we'll just call it Jocko White Tea. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, then, hey, when I, when, I, when I started saying, you know what? I need to make some good supplements, Pete and Brian in the game like I'm like hey can you make this and they're like well yeah and I said okay well then what are we gonna call it well just call it you know Jocko Jocko Super Crow and there you go so that's how we end up with the least creative name of any products that have existed I apologize to everyone Actually, it seemed like, well, early on anyway, it seemed like it wasn't creative because you're like, hey, this create, like if I create this super creative name, like, is that important really right now? I'm too busy making it good. Kind well, of we thing. talked about in the last podcast that sometimes I'm so into functionality yeah, that, that's I'm, I mean. that I'm not in, in synchronicity with the rest of the world sometimes. For instance, if you allowed me to design a house no human being would live in the house except for me for and like three other seals that I know that would be like, oh yeah, this house is perfect, man. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone else would be like, bro, what is wrong with you? Yeah. And I, so you, you know, you have to keep that. Same with vehicles. Like if I could design my own vehicle, no one would want to drive it but me. Mm. Maybe that's that one might let, be a little bit broader because yeah. you get people that'd be like, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I have to be careful because sometimes I'm just so into function mm. that it just doesn't make sense to anyone else but me. Yeah, but it does have its value big time when it comes to these supplements because what? Joint warfare function. Mm. Try lose function of your joint, see what happens. Same <laughs> thing with krill oil, same thing with discipline, brain mm-hmm. function. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, milk, that's muscle function. Muscle building function, recovery, if yeah. you will. So look, all of them together, brain function, joint function, muscle function. Boom, you're good to go. Yeah, yeah. And speaking of functionality, and this is one of the things where you kind of attacked me. Sure. Attack. <laughs> you attacked me because for you in my, you see, this is, this is a perfect example. In your mind, I'm all about function, right? Yes. Then when I started making supplements, I wanted them to taste good. Yes. And that was actually, it was actually side by side with functionality is taste. Why is that? Because if you do, if it doesn't taste good, then it's not going to function because you're not going to use it. Yeah. So these taste delish, yeah. especially milk. Let's face the facts. Face there's, the facts. there's, a, it's just a whole new thing. Yeah. It's a, it's literally a new thing in the world. We had to create. I created a name for it. Milk. Why did I create that name? What else are you going to call it? it? Doesn't make sense to call it anything else because it's not anything else. Right. It just is milk. That's what it is. Yep. Now. Okay, I got four kids. We know I have four kids. I spend time with kids. I see kids all the time. We got kids jujitsu programs at my gym. What do kids need? Kids need fuel. What do kids get fed? They get fed crap. Why? Because there's there's sugar and everything. There's high fructose corn syrup, corn syrup and everything. There's it's just garbage. So with my own kids, what do I want to feed them? I want to feed them something that's good. We made Warrior Kid Mulk. Why? Because kids need good food to eat. We're, p- we're, we're putting kids on the warrior path. I get letters every single day from kids all over the world. New Zealand, Australia, Europe, America for sure. Kids that are 7 years old, that are 9 years old, that are 11 years old, that are 14 years old. And they're on the path. They're doing pull-ups. They're doing jujitsu. They're sending pictures of their jujitsu tournament. They're drawing pictures of their medal that they got for jujitsu. Yep. There's kids that are on the warrior kid path. What are they eating? Are they eating junk? Sometimes they're eating junk not because they want to, but that's because what's that's what's in their fridge. Yep. So had to solve that problem. So we made Warrior Kid Mulk. Again, what was equivalent to functionality? The function was they need protein, they need vitamins, they need probiotics. Functional. Yeah. Part side by side with that had to taste good. Yeah. Had to taste good. And what do we end up with? Warrior Kid Mulk, chocolate and strawberry. It's freaking delicious. <laughs> yep. Both of them. They're so good. They're so tasty. It's ridiculous. So Agreed. that's Warrior Kid Mulk. That's available from originmain.com. 
we're gonna try and get that one out to the masses yeah every kid needs warrior kid milk instead of drinking some sugar full crap of fillers yeah we're gonna give you real food gonna make you stronger or soda yeah oh, man bro I used to uh, we never had soda growing up in my house but I used to go to my friend's house His name is Eric Masters he's a pilot for mm-hmm. the Air Force by the way mm-hmm um, so I'd go to his house and they'd have so he, he wasn't pounding soda all the time he was a superior athlete all this, this guy but they had soda kind of above the thing wait wait. so when I was a kid we didn't even relate like soda wasn't bad for you we just right. were like oh this is just this is just how like oh we just exactly drink right. oh I'm thirsty I'm gonna drink a coke yes. <laughs> me, and, and, to, and, me and Tony yeah. Friday used to dr- <laughs> joke about that like when you were a kid like oh I haven't drinking anything all day I'm really thirsty yeah. give me a coke yes. and you just drink it exactly right and that's the point you didn't know that, that there saying. was 36 grams of corn syrup in there yeah it's a yeah good thinking, job thinking back i'm like dang that is a crazy violation oh, it's a crazy I mean, well could you imagine like a, and a, you only weighed 48 pounds yeah it wasn't like soda. it wasn't like you're a 225 pound grown man like i am right now i could probably put down a coke and it wouldn't yeah, no cra- factor. but you're you're nine years old Love here it. <laughs> get yeah. some of that wrong some grape crush yeah oh, pineapple so anyways i cut you, you off and in, in, in mr masters no yeah but no that was that that's the point where you go home it's just that's just how oh yeah grab a soda after school whatever they'd sell sodas for 50 cents after our school you go in the thing you buy the soda yeah. whatever soda machine whatever what if it was mocked though oh. way better way <laughs> better because it tastes just as good if actually it tastes better tastes than better. soda because it's, like than a, soda it's for like sure a, yeah undeniable we're, yeah and you're yeah that'd be, just be way better so there you go warrior kid mulk mulk for the adults and then the other funny thing was i had all the people send in pictures of their kids drinking before we had warrior kid mulk it was the kids were just straight drinking up going mulk. down the mulk train themselves <laughs> 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 little kids Full two speed. years old three years old four years old yeah little kids drinking mulk oh yeah. now we got the warrior kid mulk a yeah. little less protein yeah. tasty as can be vitamins probiotics yeah just the, good to the go. way to go 100 percent. yeah totally good to go gonna change the world with that one gonna make it strong again also if you want to represent we got some shirts for you go to jockostore.com that's where you can get discipline equals freedom a shirt with jocko's head on it that i made (laughs) with the the word good you can also get a shirt with echo's head on it that jocko made yeah which have been now captured in the wild people representing yes that with those that made me feel really really good Really? Oh, so you kind of got off on that. That was like really cool. You're like, oh, I got fans. No, it was. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> of course, well, there's that. Put it this way: for someone to represent that hardcore, to that wear that hardcore. shirt, because it's a cool design. Yeah. I like it. And then you know, for them, that was it, a little. Everyone seemed really happy. Little subliminal compliment in my direction because I designed it. Yeah. Everyone seemed real happy with it. I'm saying the whole group. Yeah. You know, there's some layers like on that it. shirt. Yeah, massive multiple layers <laughs> nonetheless some cool stuff on there we got some hoodies on there um uh, yeah if you want to represent go to jocklestore.com some good stuff on there for everybody by the way yeah and also subscribe to the podcast this podcast for sure itunes wherever you get podcasts you know that also the warrior kid podcast take a listen to it all ages take a listen to it definitely kids D- dave burke he's saying he just got that the warrior kid podcast on repeat that's for good his deal, kids. Dave. Yeah, good deal, Dave. Yeah. But he's got the he's got the Warrior Kid podcast on repeat for his kids. I talked to so many people when, when we got roll call muster. They're like, yeah, we're we're going. We just got it twenty four seven. Kids are in the car. We listen to Warrior Kid podcast. Yeah. The lessons that you want to teach your kid that your kid doesn't really want to hear from you because you're their mom, you're their dad. <laughs> they don't want to hear it from you. Yeah. They want to hear it from Uncle Jake. Yeah. They want to hear it from Uncle Jake, and I would go so far as to say, don't even. T- one of the, you know, how you said you can't just say, oh, "I'm going to take extreme ownership of that." Yeah. What you can't do with your kids is turn around when you're in the car and say, "You see, Uncle Jake's saying the yeah. same thing I told you." Yeah, yeah. No, don't do that. Don't, <laughs> no, don't, don't, don't do discredit it. Uncle Jake. Yeah. And you're not really discrediting him, but what you're doing is, you're bringing, you're, you're forming a team. Right? Yeah. You're yeah, forming a team. You. It's us against you. And when Uncle Jake's talking to the kid, they're on the same team. Same team, yeah. Uncle Jake is in the game with the kids. Yeah. The kids, you have a natural friction with your parents. If you take Uncle Jake's side strongly, now you're on Uncle Jake. Now it's you against your kids against you. You don't want that. Mm-hmm. You should almost play reverse psychology. Yeah. 
and be like, well, you know, it's a little extreme for Uncle Jake to want to work out that much. <laughs> and your kid be like, well, I think we should probably listen to Uncle Jake, Dad. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe we should get a pull-up bar. Yeah. By the way, get a pull-up bar for your kids. Yeah. Just get a pull-up bar for them. It doesn't cost much. It costs 12 bucks. You just need a piece of pipe. Yeah. And you just, you just put it, hang it somewhere for your kids so they can do pull-ups. Pull-ups are important for children. Yeah. Straight up. There's some fact about no kid that can do a pull-up is obese in the whole world. You can't be obese and do a pull-up as a kid. Dang, it's good. So let's do some pull-ups. Dig it, yeah. Yeah, I feel like a good way too for the don't don't be like, I'm gonna put this on and you're gonna listen to oh, it. Oh yeah, don't do and that. And like it. Yeah. yeah. You want the kids, you want, it's like <coughs> when you go through military boot camp, mm-hmm. the, dr- the drill instructors are real mean. Because they want you to form a gang against them. That's part of the psychologies. They yeah. want it to be us against them. So we form up into a platoon and we're against this guy. And then in the end, it all comes together. Gotcha. Yeah, it's the same sense. thing we're going here. We, you don't, you want to let Uncle Jake be part of their team. Yeah. And you just, oh, man, a lot of the stuff Uncle Jake says, man, he seems like a pretty intense guy. Mm-hmm. Oh, and actually, Uncle Jake isn't that intense on the Warrior Kid podcast. No. He's telling stories about being a kid. Yeah, he's answering questions about being a kid. Yeah, podcast so, is soft or not softer, but like he's yeah. not as he's more intense in the book for sure. He's more intense in the book. The yeah. trash can yeah. waking up. Mom. Yeah, yeah. You understand? Yeah, yeah. Good. So one, yeah, for sure. there you go. Also, the also get your warrior kid soap, which Irish Oaks Ranch. Aiden's up there making soap on his farm so that you can stay clean. Thirteen year old businessman getting after it. YouTube, we are stepping up YouTube videos. Confirmed. 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 You may have seen some of them. A little shorter, a little bit more tight. Yeah. Right and tight. Yeah. We like that. So go to YouTube, subscribe to that, and you can see Echo's legit longer videos too. Echo has skills. This is a known fact. (laughs) Sure. (laughs) Psychological warfare little album with tracks to help you get through those moments of weakness there's a new one being made we're working on it if you got any recommendations or any suggestions or anything you need from psychological warfare some moment of weakness that you have we got a request for shopping an impulsive shopper we're gonna put a, we're gonna put a damper on that straight yeah. up we're gonna yeah, shut that down curve that yeah, other things smoking we're gonna, we're gonna shut that down yeah so if you got any suggestions for that then you can make that happen that's available anywhere you can buy mp3s yeah, very helpful. 100% success rate. Also, speaking of moments of weakness, like if you don't want to go to the gym, get stuff, gym stuff, workout equipment for your house. This is where you get them, on it.com. Get kettlebells, rings, battle ropes. You can get a, a, a mace and a club. Do that. Bro, you'll get a good workout. Anyway, it makes it way easier to stay on the path. One, because let's face it, driving to the gym is not that cool. And if you're feeling lazy or your time is pressuring, like time constraints, bro, just stay home, get a workout, hard one too. That's where I get mine from. You know, yeah, on it.com slash Jocko. That's the spot to go, 100%. Also, Jocko White D. That sounded like almost like it was going to have some music kicking in. <laughs> Jocko <laughs> White D. Ding, 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 Jocko. Ding, ding. Well, in, there's a dichotomy in that too. Sure, it tastes good. We know that. it's Tasting good is part of the functionality. I get mm-hmm. it. But like white tea kind of sounds kind of light and like dainty. Oh, I see I what don't you're know. saying. See what I'm saying? Like, and then you, and it's, it's not red. like black coffee. You oh, know, yeah, and they yeah, get, yeah. no, 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 no black coffee. Just get some pomegranate. I was telling Leif, I've never had a sip of coffee in my whole life. I thought you said you didn't like the taste. Okay, well, I should have clarified that. You don't more. like the smell. I didn't even like the smell. Hey. So I didn't even put it to my lips. <laughs> not really. All right. Hey, man, fair enough. I dig it. Um, Jocko White Tea, my wife's mom, yeah. a Brit. Sure. Like, my wife's a Brit. My wife's mom is even more British, right? Because she's yeah. this old school oh, yeah. Brit. <laughs> She, guess what she drinks? Because you know, you know, British people—they don't even play around with tea. They don't even no. play around with tea. Hot That's tea part of the day. deal. Part of the yeah. Part of the life. Yeah. Guess what kind of tea she drinks? Jocko White. Tea. Yeah, <laughs> boy. <laughs> so obviously she does. Now we're sending shipments of Jocko White tea to England. So she brews the home, it. The, hot. The, the 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 damn world global home of tea. Yeah. They we're having to ship it. Cause you but your thing was always the cold the iced tea. No, I have the warm tea. 
so you well, I mean as far as like before you made Jocko white tea you I'd always see you drinking the cold one most most of the time most of the time I prefer cold because yeah. most of the time I'm in a situation where I am hot Got and I it. need to cool down yes sometimes I'm in a situation where I'm cool and I need to warm up when you want to sell them yeah when you're cold you want to be cozy no, you know you I curl up that. with a nice you better back off <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, I'm saying Brits, they don't dig the cold yeah. iced tea, that's well, why. Well, you know what's nice is like before you have to talk a lot, sure. you, you can drink some white tea for the throat. Mm. Just like relax the throat and yet at the same time you're getting a little caffeine hitter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hitter. Getting Thank a little you. caffeine hitter with mm. some antioxidants. Yeah. And not to mention if there's any vehicles you need to pick up, you got an 8,000 pound deadlift <laughs> so you're yep. good to go, guaranteed. Yeah, whatever you need. Yeah, it's good. I saw Theo Vaughn the other day, and he was he posted something on Instagram. He had a Chick Fil A hitter. <laughs> <laughs> so those of you that are wondering about my hitter reference, yes, Theo Vaughn, thank you. You have brought that word into my vocabulary, and I had a little Jocko White tea hitter. I also have been using the term to describe one scoop of milk. Mm. Just that's just a one, just a one scoop hitter. Good, because because two scoops legitimately fills you up. You don't want to eat a meal. Yeah, no, okay. you don't want it. Or you you ate like a little decent meal, but you still want something a dessert. Two yeah. two scoops, and you're just that's, that's too much. Too much. Mm. You have that little one scoop hitter. Easy money, and you're good to go. Good to go. <laughs> and if you try the strawberry kids milk, <laughs> the strawberry kids milk is ridiculously tasty. Yeah, you're you're onto something on that yeah, one for sure. Check. And some books. I oh think, yeah, right? got some books. Got, got a, quite a few books actually. Way the Warrior Kid, Mark's Mission. Already talked about that a little bit. You want your kids on the path doing pull-ups, studying, memorizing, getting smarter, getting better. This is not. This is not. Hey, I think this will happen. This is at this point same thing. I know this will happen. Yeah. I know this will happen. Your kids will want a pull-up bar. Your kids will want to do jujitsu. Your kids will want to study for school. Study for school. What kid wants to study for school? Warrior kids. Yeah. Warrior kid. The first book is called Way of the Warrior Kid. The second book is called Mark's Mission. Learn about life. Next book, Discipline Equals Freedom. Field Manual. I forgot to say this recently. If you want the audio version of that, it's on iTunes, MP3s, whatever, Amazon Play, Google Music, whatever. It's on, it's on all those. <laughs> yep. And that will that's where you get the audio version. I recommend, the book is not normal. It's not a normal book. Mm-mm. So get that book, read a page a day. Read a page a day for a year. See what that does to your life. Mm. I'm gonna t- I, I'll get, make an assessment. You, your life will get better. Is that a bold statement? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. But let me tell you, give it a try. Yeah. Give it a try. <sighs> extreme ownership. Interestingly, extreme ownership. Number five on the Wall Street Journal uh, bestseller list. It was the number one New York Times bestseller. That list rotates or whatever. <laughs> Wall Street Journal, number five on that. Number 13 on Amazon. Most read books of all books on Amazon. There's millions of books on the, in the world. Yeah. It's number 13. We got, so, Extreme Ownership, Leadership Book, Experiences from Combat Applied to Your Business and Your Life Today. The follow-up to that book, The Dichotomy of Leadership, also a New York Times bestseller. Number 19 on Amazon, of all books read. That's crazy. Number one Wall Street Journal bestseller in business right now. Mm. Why is this? Because of you all supporting. So thank you for supporting those books. And the feedback has been awesome on both books and definitely appreciate that feedback. And then coming soon, Mikey and the Dragons. It's coming out on Jocko Publishing. Like I like I said, if we can make looms, if we can weave material, we can print some books. And that's what we're doing. It means it's us against the big dogs, against the big publishing companies. So need a little bit of get some for this one. Going to try and crush them. Why? Because that's what we do over here. <laughs> hey, story of a little boy that's scared of everything. 
and learns through the reading of a story inside that story of how another little boy, a little prince, overcomes his fears, how to face his dragons, because of course, we all have dragons to fight. (laughs) Mike and the Dragons, it's available for pre-order right now on Amazon, comes out middle of November. Echelon Front, Leadership Consultancy, we will help your team solve whatever problems that they have through leadership. No matter what that problem is, it's a leadership problem. It's me, Leif Babin, JP Danell, Dave Burke, Flynn Cochran, Mike Sorelli, and Mike Bahama. Email us, info at echelonfront.com, or check out the website if you need that kind of help at your business. I already talked about the muster. It's been sold out. Uh, the next musters, 07, 08. We're looking at Denver and Chicago, so you're on notice to set that up. And, of course, EF Overwatch connecting special operations leaders and combat aviation leaders, experienced leaders, tested leaders, combat proven leaders with companies in the civilian sector that need experienced proven leaders. Go to EFOverwatch.com to get in that game. And if you want to roll with us virtually, you can find us on the interwebs, on Twitter, on Instagram, and on that fishy, fishy, fishy boy. Echo is at Echo Charles, and I am at Jocko Willink. And thanks to everyone for listening, especially our military, police, law enforcement, firefighters, paramedics, EMTs, border patrol, correctional officers, and all first responders. Thanks for making this podcast and our way of life possible by keeping us safe from evil and misfortune of the world and to everyone else when you face those hardships and challenges that are coming your way and they are coming your way don't get pushed back on your heels don't ask yourself why me ask yourself what am I going to do about it and then go get after it Until next time, this is Echo and Jocko.